everyone welcome we'll start the program with the invocation so please compose yourself sit straight hold your palms and close your eyes completely we will do the invocation to patanjali first and then chant guru brahma guru vishnu Oh Oh चिदेन वाचा मल शरीर से वैद्यक प्रवरम मुनीना पतंजलि प्राजलिराण तोस्मी आबाहुपुरुषाकार शंखचक्रासीधारिण सहस्रशिस श्वेत प्रणमा पतंजलि गुरुर्ब्रह्म गुरुर्विष्णु गुरुर्देव महेशर गुरुसाक्षात्ब्रह्म तस्म श्रीगुरव नम हरि एंड ओपन द आईज good morning good afternoon good evening depending on the part of the world you are living in and today we are celebrating guruji's our dear guruji's 103rd birth anniversary to be very honest to me it doesn't feel like a birth anniversary it is more like a birthday because guruji's presence is so strong in our lives and i'm sure people around do feel him being there with us so it's not really an anniversary you know all of us who are present here on the screen we were very fortunate to have that the opportunity to spend a lot of time with guruji apart from the classes and that is the time that uh, we understood why guruji was what he was what made him from a young lad sickly lad to this gigantic superhuman divine yogi who could touch the lives of millions across the world from a time when it took even a letter to take uh, took a letter about 2 to 3 weeks or sometimes 4 weeks to reach from one corner of the world to the other how did he touch the hearts of millions of people through his teachings of yoga and through his presence so today friends there are many people in the world who have had this unique opportunity and all of us have our stories which are sustaining us even today but we had this small group of people uh, who will be sharing their experiences their stories of how guruji has touched and these super human qualities of guruji as i say so so we have people we have Uh, pandurang rao and i must say that anybody who has ever visited the institute or even thought of visiting the institute knows pandu as we call him there wouldn't be anybody who doesn't know pandu then so he will be talking to us his his life with guruji started uh, much before he was born 
his father and guruji were friends even before guruji got married so pandu has literally spent all his life with guruji if he has worked if i may call it work it has always been at the institute and nowhere else then we have jawahar jawahar has been a student of guruji since the 1960s and it was one fine day in, in 1984 that guruji told jawahar who is from mumbai and uh, his jawahar's father and my brother birju my uh, father that is my father on a sunday morning that he is going to take these two boys with him to the us and i think they had no clue they hadn't traveled and that was a big change and they're going to share and he's going to share about the times they had with guruji traveling which must have been uh, quite quite a learning then i have uh, pachi from madrid spain who has uh, spent a lot of time traveling with guruji in uh, is, in europe and israel and if i'm not mistaken guruji has stayed in his house in madrid uh, and he is going to share some of his experiences then i have stephanie uh, anybody again who has visited the institute in the last 15 years before uh, guruji left us physically would have seen stephanie in the library library and stephanie were quite synonymous and she has played a major role in typing out guruji's books doing the corrections and if all the ashtadal yoga mala has come out i think stephanie has a big role but apart from the big role that stephanie had then i'm sure there was so much that stephanie learned just being in the library when tons of visitors came to meet him and then we have the youngest in the lot which is raya uh, raya started as a child and uh, especially during guruji's 80th birthday in acting a play he played guruji's role if i'm not mistaken raya no he was he was there in the play and after that raya spent almost the whole day at the institute for long periods of time so before we start these interactions i would like to give the new audience a gist of guruji's life during the decades that all of us have spent it would generally be and this is in pune it would generally be that uh, we don't know what guruji did at home and we are only going to talk about our personal interactions and experiences and what we've seen but uh, guruji would come to to the practice hall around 8:39 he would either be practicing or teaching and in the earlier days he would take the intensive classes uh, then the classes would be on and people who are practicing in the attending the class may would not even have known guruji was present in one of the corners the practice would go on till 12 and then lunch at home and then back between 2 to 3 he would be in the library the library was like the sanctum sanctorum of the institute apart from the main yoga hall and it is here that many visitors from across the world came to meet him it is here that guruji wrote most of his books it is here that lot of informal teaching happened and people just sat in the library awaiting the moment when guruji would be talking with somebody there was nothing in isolation as far as guruji was concerned nothing behind closed doors and then he would either be resting or in the earlier days go back to the yoga hall life appeared simple but the amount that this life has achieved is immense so i'm going to now start with pandu the one who who possibly met guruji very very young and pandu any memories uh, of your childhood with guruji well uh, can you hear me yes uh see the, i know him since when i was maybe 8 9 10 years old so i remember so he used to come to my shop my father used to have a shop on lakshmi road and i was knowing him that he is only teaching yoga and i used to just talk with him those days uh, and i was knowing he is teaching yoga later on stage every time i used to say i want to come and do yoga i want to come and do that and it is going on last like 10 years and maybe somewhere in 1969 i remember i was maybe 17 18 years old that time and then i told he said now don't ask me because i know you are not going to come and i said no no i will come and i met him in loyola school where guruji used to conduct classes in the school and that was my first class it was wednesday evening 6 pm 
a couple of students from the Pune, they used to come there. Geeta ji and sometimes Guru ji's amma, I mean Guru ji's missus, also used to come with Guru ji on the scooter. Geeta Prashant on one scooter, and we used to do the classes. Or Guru ji, I know the funny thing is what I saw is there was a medical patients also. I remember still there is a one bad case of Mr. Kakade of asthma. and he is completely cured guruji was giving him nothing special treatment just doing general class he became all right so that is then that school after that guruji told me that now you can come to my home also i am teaching so and so date so that is like that i started my yoga journey ha huh? can you describe some of the early classes when there were five students because today students cannot imagine guruji with five students and six students see when there was a school school used to be sometimes a school hall 15 20 people used to be there but guruji's home always five six people not more because there was not much place and there was exactly guruji's opposite side guruji's friend was there mr soni and he was having a one ground floor only one big little bit of big hall bigger hall So Guruji used to most of the students used to teach there. So we used myself and Shah we used to go there. Father Lobo used to join. Geeta Prashant used to be there. Like that five six people only there we Guruji used to teach us. And one day one week pranayam, one week back bend, one week balancing, one week we play chakrasan. Okay. Jawar, uh, there is a question from the audience, and also in general, like Guruji was quite a disciplinarian. His practice was very regular. So when Guruji went abroad, you know, when the schedules were very tight, so what happened to his practice? You know, eighty-four, you went with him for the first time. What were the kind of schedules? When and how did he practice? Actually, there was no change in his practice. When once he was settled in a place. his practice timing was almost the same early morning maybe at 4 or 4:30 he would have his coffee practice his pranayama and then he would be out uh in the hall or the room if if there was a smaller place and by himself he would practice in the room if we were around him we would all practice in the uh, in the living room Every, of course everything was silent we would stop stay in a place if we saw guruji doing standing asana we did standing asana if guruji is doing back bends we started doing back bends when all the while he would observe what we were doing quietly he would observe and then uh, after the practice was over he would have his coffee again then he would tell us you know the way you guys are practicing i don't think you are going to get, make any headway so you have to when you are observing at me at least you are seeing that i am also doing you have to look with very sharp eyes to what we are doing to what he is doing and then maybe you will catch something or the other but then of course you know the compassion in guruji would always resurface he would come to one of us and then quietly adjust us we wouldn't even notice it he was there he would come behind us or if we were in forward extensions come and quickly adjust us and just go away that's it he knew exactly where to touch you and that was it and in an instant you just got the pose that was it that was the silent way of teaching you didn't have to tell him what was wrong he knew what exactly was wrong he knew exactly what needs to be done and he came did his job went back to his own practice <laughs> and that was it when of course those they were very tight schedules so therefore uh, we would always be uh, ready with a light breakfast so uh, mostly the host would provide for the breakfast but there were times when we were to get just among ourselves so he would have something very light prof- preferably dry fruits milk and that was sort of his uh, diet for the day so it was very frugal if i may say that and he carried on for the rest of the day in fact there was once uh, 
we asked him that uh, in a place where it was very difficult to get uh, uh, vegetarian food, so we asked him, Guruji, how would you manage, you know, where a place that you, I mean, people like us who can, of course, I'm totally vegetarian, <clears throat> found it difficult. How did you manage? He just smiled, smiled and said, there's always milk available and there is bread available. Milk and bread is enough to sustain you. And that's how he sustained himself most of the times. I'm talking of much of the earlier days, even before we joined him for his uh, travels. That's the way he would travel. And of course, the ad other advantage of being with Guruji was, like you said, he took everyone along. So when somebody, when our, the host would say, uh, Guruji, would you like to uh, go out somewhere for that? He never said no. He never said no, provided, of course, it didn't ups upset his schedule. That was one thing for sure. We made sure the schedule. So he said, how much time do we have between this and this? All right, we can do something nearby or whatever was interesting. And of course, we had to go with him. You can't say, no, Guruji, we don't want to come. No, you are everybody. Can. Nobody even argued. Even if you didn't feel like going, you wanted to rest. No, you had to go. And that was it. So it was always we were together like an entourage. Uh, you talked about practice. Pachi, I would like to ask you, you know, when you were traveling and you must have, people would have gone to so many places, especially, uh, there wouldn't be all props. Today, anger yoga is props. So did Guruji really need, carried his own props or along with him or did he need props for practice? Nothing, nothing at all. Nothing, only just uh, his body was his uh, prop. And uh, the practices were... Uh, he was never missing the practice. He was uh, very strict on uh, on that uh, duty to, uh, towards his uh, practice. But the practices with him were uh, sometimes, uh, and uh, for me particularly, they were a little bit hard because uh, I don't know, Jawahar didn't tell anything, but I remember sometimes when we were, he was there in uh, Biria's house once in Paris, he started doing forward bands. And we joined all together. We were there with Bill Jew and Joair and uh, seven, seven, eight people there in uh, Bidia's place. And uh, he started doing four bargains. Each side, 20 minutes. All the poses, you remember Jawar. Each time, 20 minutes, all the poses like that, staying, and staying, and staying, and staying. Nobody was coming before him, of course. Nobody, nobody was coming up. And uh, we were all staying there. It was... Uh, Killing, at least for me. I don't know what is the uh, Java's remembering of that. But sometimes he was staying like that. I remember once after uh, Rishikesh, but maybe in 97, and uh, we went to Musuri. And a uh, long journey, we were, you, we were all there. And the long journey of uh, in buses and everything. And we reached there and that in uh, that place we were staying. And there was a yoga room. It was uh, Raju's and uh, Swati's place. And uh, I, uh, I wanted also to practice something. I went to yoga room and Guruji was there. Setubanda, strong Setubanda. And I started my practice and Guruji in Setubanda. I continued practice, this pose, that pose, that pose, Guruji in Setubanda. And I changed again and again and this and this and Guruji Setubanda. More than 40, 45 minutes stay Guruji in Setubanda. He comes up out of the, of the pose and he looks at me and he says, this is the best post, the best post after a long journey. And he left like that. And so I was there doing one another thing. But while he was just staying, 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 staying in the post. So no props were needed for him in the, in the travel. And uh, with anything, he was doing a wonderful, wonderful practice. Yeah, I just let to add on that. Yeah, even on the staircase, you know, they were in some homes, everything. he would know how to use the staircase to do the inversions, etc. And uh, so once he asked, uh, how long can you do Shavasana? Now look at that. He said, how long can you do Shavasana? I said, Guruji, I don't prefer Shavasana. I would rather do Ardha Halasana supported rather than do Shavasana. 
And then he revealed to us something very interesting. He says, I can stay, that means Guruji can stay, absolutely silent for 105 minutes in Shavasana. So that was one of those things. Like Pachi Bhai, we now I remembered it when he says he was still in Svetovanda for such a long time. So you can understand when he practices Shavasan, he could stay for for a time like that. Yes. Uh, Raya and Stephanie, you know, we have seen pictures of Guruji. We have seen Guruji uh, practicing and you know, in his in these are pictures from 2014. And, uh, you know, the hall would be empty. People would come and practice like uh, Jawar and Pachi said. He would continue. And these are some of these pictures which have been taken. They have not been post photographs. I don't know who's taken them possibly. But uh, could you want to, or sometimes a practice one, do you want to say something about these pictures or these times of uh, Guruji's practice? You know, and what was its impact when you were there? One fourth uh, his age. <laughs> uh, see, the thing is, as uh, as it's referred many a times, what he is doing externally and his connect internal and external was such that, you know, you could see structurally arranged Guruji, and suddenly you would be like, not know what is happening. So as as Pachibai was just telling, and I was. Uh, when I started, I was 20 something. And obviously, it's the age, it's the uh, much more craziness than now. So at some point of time, after I had started practicing on a more regular basis, one day, I decided I will do what Guruji does for that much time, support it. So Guruji went to Dvipada Viparita Dandasan. He was facing the rope wall. And uh, he just went to Dvipada Viparita Dandasan. So he, there is no way that he could have seen me. So I went into the chair. And I stayed in the chair for Viparita Dandasan. Arms put in and all that. Da, 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 da. And then after like about 8 minutes, 10 minutes, my things begin to burn. You know, I'm stretching the quadriceps as he's stretched out his legs. I'm doing it on the chair. I'm 20. He's about 83, 84 kind of at that age. And uh, so I tried to stay and stay. And after 20 minutes, when I was so well settled and everything was burning to such a degree that I didn't know how to come out of that position, Guruji went down. I was like, whoosh. And I, because I just couldn't know, I didn't know how to come up. I stayed for another two, three minutes and then finally had to pull myself out. And the practice went on and he went on to do drawbacks and other stuff by when I was like sitting down. So after the timing of 9 to 12 was over, I went to him and I told him, uh, Guruji, this is what happened. So he, of course, had a beautiful hearty laugh. And he said, what to do now? I'm aging. I forgot to come down off the post. <laughs> so <I was> like, <laughs> <laughs> that was one of the very early like first two three years in my practice I was like okay it's something different so what looks outside that he's staying for 20 minutes there's something different happening inside so it's not like you're just structurally holding that position which I tried to do holding that position for 20 minutes structurally even on the chair but if that something inside the dive the you know, the scuba dive that he would take in that apparent structure, we wouldn't know how to handle that. Um, I can remember. Yeah. Yes, often, yeah. Often in his um, practice, of course, there's always present his stopwatch. And um, I think this has probably been told before, but we'll say it again. And, he, he was quite clear. He talked a little bit about his watch that he always had in his hand or nearby, somewhere where he could see it. He never used the stopwatch for accumulation. He wasn't accumulating a better, bigger, brighter, fuller 
anything. He wasn't trying to gain more minutes, more muscle, more breath, anything. It was not an accumulative process. What he said to us, what he told us about the use of a stopwatch was that he was using the watch so that he could tell because often he, Guruji would start off on a, on a practice and on a certain day of the week, perhaps he would do his backbend practice. And in his later age, yes, he would use props. That merely meant he used long timings as well. So he would perhaps do the same pose over the same props, always on a Thursday, something like this. And he told us that the reason why he used the stopwatch was so that he could watch his internal state and when restlessness or a change in his mind state would arise, that's why he used the clock. Um, and it was kind of like, ah, because everybody else times themselves like a race. But no, he used in order to see the change in his internal state. Um, one of the other things that came out of his I remember once watching him, he had done a long um, practice and um, the last kind of like, seemed to me at least half of it was dedicated to the Savangasana positions. Setabandha plus Halasana plus Savangasana, the Setabandha positions. And this was after having done some other work as well. And that that um, period of time would have been at least an hour in the Savangasana positions one way or the other. He came out of that practice and he, after his Shavasana, he went to go back home. He had his dhoti over his arm, over his elbow. And as he was starting to walk out, he turned around, he looked straight at me and he said, you know, what I do doesn't matter. It's what I don't do, that's what's important. And I tell you, this has been the biggest lesson that just continues. These very simple things, very simple observations, the fact that he talked about the use of his clock, the fact that for him, what was important was what it was that he wasn't doing. These are very important lessons for all of us, which, aren't given out in the classes, aren't given out in, in the books. It's yes. just as pure experience, yeah. So, so true, Stephanie. And, uh, you know, what you said about his practice, people presume that timing is an aspect of Iyengar yoga. So you stay or hold poses for long. But the reality is that Guruji got absorbed in the pose and uh, like the Gita would say, you know, your mind is so absorbed in God for a yogi. And therefore, we must remember that what he had was not a timer, but a stopwatch. And like mm -hmm. you rightly said, and we have Guruji's very, very famous uh, quote, the body is my temple and the asanas are my prayers. And his practice or his sadhana, for lack of better words, was his Ishwara Pranidhana, his surrender to God. And, uh, you know, we, we've sort of seen it, we've experienced, we may not be able to articulate it. Pachi, would you like to talk something about Guruji's devotion, you know, to God? Okay. Uh, when uh, traveling with him in uh, different places, we want to speak about his devotion, okay? So uh, it is normal to understand being a devoted man that uh, uh, when we were in Tirupati with him, for example, in, at the Lord, at the feet of uh, Lord Enkateshwara, it was normal to see him in that degree and that grade of absorption in, at the feet of the Lord. It was, uh, I remember, I will always remember those particular moments when uh, he was there completely inside and I was thinking, okay, he's living his faith, he's living his devotion towards his family God. But I was surprised in a different way when I saw him in a similar way in front of uh, Morenetta in Montserrat, 
uh, Virgin Mary statue in uh, Catalonia. When he, he was in front of her, he was also like this concentrate inside, looking inwards and in a full state of, in a state of uh, concentration. I saw the same in France in uh, the Cathedral of Chartres or in uh, Notre Dame in Paris. Also in uh, Spain in Cathedral of Toledo, I have seen the same attitude of respect towards the Christian church, the Christian, the Virgin Mary. And especially, I will never, never forget in uh, Jerusalem at the Holy Sepulcher. After making the queue, we were inside and uh, I will never forget that face that state, that light coming from him and that state of absorption there with the hands uh, holding, holding the palms, palms in front of the chest and how he was living that moment. I was inside the cave uh, in the inside part. Biria was near to the entrance and he saw that the watchman, the keeper who was there for the queue, many people were coming, the watchman was stopping the people to come in because he didn't want to interrupt. It was usually it was very quick. He didn't want to interrupt that state that he was seeing in uh, Guruji. And he stayed and stopped everyone till Guruji bring the, brought the hands down and uh, got ready to go out of the cave. So this absorption, this, uh, I remember now very, very clearly, that state of inwardness in that Christian uh, temple that I will never forget. That was the clear proof for me that when he was telling that any way going towards the hill, the, the summit of the hill is a good way. All the ways are good. All the religions bring to the same God that uh, he proved that he was living that really in the day-to-day -day life. Very touching, Pachi. Uh, we have seen and, uh, you know, it gives you goosebumps when we start recollecting. Guruji, actually a yogi, saw the soul in each person. He, I don't think Guruji saw individuals or anything outward in a person. He went directly to the core. So, uh, Pandu, you know, you've had people that for 40, 45 years, you have been at the institute with Guruji about the, right from the start. You would have a lot of visitors coming to the institute. You know, people from all classes, backgrounds. Anything you would like to say how Guruji would meet them, greet them? Uh, see, normally Guruji used to come to the library about by 2.30 or 3 p.m. And I myself used to come at the same time. Whoever used to come to meet Guruji earlier day, everybody used to come after three minutes and they used to sit near my table. I used to go down and ask the eyes to brief them, hey, Guruji, so and so person is there and he want to see you. And he said, okay, huh? let him come down. Then the person will come down or whoever is maybe, they will meet. Sometimes Guruji must be busy writing, completing his letter because many times those days, Dictation used to give, I used to write a letter, or then later on Kumar and other people came like Manda and all. So whoever people used to come, the timing was to come after 3 p.m. And then till 6 p.m. you used to meet the people. And after 6 people you used to go to the hall for the classes, for whatever class is there, to either help or to go do his own practice. I remember an incident here where, uh, you know, there was a student from Mumbai who wanted to visit Guruji and she was a patient with Parkinson's very old. And then the son narrated, she suddenly had this desire. She barely could walk that I want to meet Guruji. And the son thought, I haven't taken an appointment. Let me just go there if I meet him. And this must be when Guruji must be in his 90s. So he went there and he met Pandu and Pandu said, well, uh, Guruji is in the library. So since she cannot walk down, whenever he comes up, which is normally around four o'clock or five o'clock at that time, you can meet him. And this person said that, okay, we will take a chance if she can. And he must have gone down, like he said, usually telling, informing Guruji that, you know, there's this old lady who has come, old lady who was possibly much younger, at least 25, 30 years younger than Guruji. And this gentleman then told me 
that after some time guruji himself came up and met that lady and for that lady this was uh, what is possibly the most precious moment of her life after a few days she passed away but the son says that the joy that i could give my mother that when she wanted to meet guruji it was guruji who came up so it is it just shows that how much compassion and value that guruji had for every human life and uh, now i would like to come you know to the therapy classes again ayanga yoga is very famous for its therapeutic aspects and uh, maybe you know raya you were the raya you were one of the youngest ones and possibly you were supposed to be very agile you are muted yeah i'm sharing a picture of the therapy classes and uh, if you could mention you know what was happening this is the normal scene of a therapy class for anybody who's visited institute and there would be 70 80 90 patients with all kinds of problems and uh, maybe some insight on how this was managed and for those who cannot find out this is guruji there raya yeah <laughs> so uh as you can see guruji is on behind that last column and geeta ji is near the platform and different uh, people are in different asanas now the class timing was either 4 to 6 or 6 uh, to 8 on wednesday uh typically when we started we would have we would have uh, later when i started coming to medical classes we would have a written sequence geeta ji would have asked the patient spoken with the patient and would have prepared a sequence that uh, we would try to go through but when it came to guruji guruji uh, didn't have to look at a paper to see what's with the person he could see the person and he could see the uh, problem he could see the difficulties he could see the limitations all in once so then he would go from one end of the hall to the other end of the hall so typically uh, if there is a particular assistant say for example i am uh, helping someone to do supta pada angushta sen 2 he would just quickly come there look at the person what i am helping that person and would just say do this way not this way and it can be from uh the angle of the rope that one needs to pull to don't make them do supta pada angushtasan to right now make them do ardha chandrasan and then come to supta pada angushtasan so it varied to different levels of uh corrections adjustments uh inputs before you know he's gone he's gone on to work on some other people and from that corner he has an i if you are whatever he has told you have you done it properly uh, raj i don't know if you can see me or not yes. but if uh, if if you would uh, if he would have i remember this very vividly raj if you could spotlight me for a second uh, there was a heart patient and that person was in purvottanasan and he just took a uh, not even took a blanket he just said take the blanket and fold it this way and put it under uh, his back in a particular um, particular position you know and he just went and before i could fold and put it in from that side he sent someone saying that raya has done one extra fold so don't put extra fold that person will get a back ache so just and i just remember the way his hands used to move you know how to fold it in that there will be so much non verbal thing going on like you can't put it in words you know he would just like show you so if you can catch it and yeah as as you said i was probably 1/4 his age moving was so slow um the grasp was obviously like it was properly properly uh, ignorant and we just didn't know uh but yeah i mean that 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 was so fascinating and sometimes he would show it and open it and said now do it so sometimes if the if the time permitted he would make you do it again see and do 
So uh, yeah, Seth. If I may add here, sure. one of the experiences uh, when we were on the trips abroad, uh, Guruji would just walk into a room and sit, look at a person far away, and he says that person has a problem with the spine or something like that. You know, he would just say this guy, something is not correct with that person. There was one incident, or one instance, sorry where a person was doing Janushir Satsang. We walked into the class and everybody was in Janushir Satsang. He saw one man struggling. So he just went up to him and he said, remove your t-shirt. You'll be surprised. That person removed his t-shirt. There was a piece of flesh missing from his spine. It had been excavated because that person had had cancer in that region. Now he could see it. He could just see it from a distance. The man is clothed. He walked into the room. He picks up that person. So this was his, uh, I don't know what to say, his uh, divine sort of vision with which he could see from a distance what was wrong. And of course, we have seen it also in the mega classes that he conducted. He was a that person with that yellow T-shirt. His right leg is not straight. Go and help him. You know, things like that. So, this is one of those fascinating things about Guruji. In, in fact, there was a question from the audience that how, when Guruji taught such large numbers, how did you get his personal attention? And anybody, I mean, you know, when Guruji's voice was there, say, we look at the 80th birthday, it was about 800 people, the first mega class, I would say, in India. And it was uh, in Ambrosia. It was uh, something which was planned last. The plan was there, but the venue was had to be shifted last minute. And uh, the entire 800 people, we never knew where the, we heard the voice. We never knew where Guruji was. And all of them were alert. So nobody could, you know, be uh, sort of slack. So, but uh, just to answer this person, if anybody would like to give some more examples, because I think everybody has seen Guruji, Gita Ji, their, their eyes were all over the place. Okay, if you really wanted his attention, all you did was not to listen, not to follow what he was saying. That was enough. Did anybody have the courage to do that? <laughs> no, but in the, in the group of people who didn't know him, you know, and who would come to class, he, he would immediately catch the person, you're not paying attention. It, it was like that. Then he would, yes, he, he would uh, ask the person, is there something wrong? Why is it you're not able to follow? That was his compassion part. Somebody didn't understand the language. Okay, he understood that sometimes the, the accent was different. So people sometimes did not follow. But if that person did not follow, he went up to that person or he would bring that person up on the stage and if that person, again, if he did not follow, he would ask somebody to translate, so to help the person. He always saw that everyone benefited from the session. Nobody went home dissatisfied, sort of thing. Not only, uh, not only if I can say, not only that he was uh, seeing immediately what was happening in the class, but even I saw somebody in a session uh, somebody in Guruji telling somebody in a session, are you not ashamed to think these kind of things in front of me? To think, not to say, to think this kind of, th of things in front of me. So, okay, of course he was uh, seeing everybody, but not only that, we all, we all know, maybe we are not going to speak about that, but we all know Rajvi, Javair, everybody, and everybody, Stephanie Raya, that uh, we had experiences that we know certainly 100% that he was knowing what we were thinking when he was around. Yes, yes. or not? With your hands? Yes. Of yes. Course. Of course, Abs all of us. Abs we will not, we will not speak about this. We will Abs not speak about this. But we all know that he was knowing very well what was our mental state, yes. mind state in front of him, around him, or even not, even not around. You couldn't hide. Yes. Yeah. There was no way you could hide. And, and possibly even what we were going to think. 
<laughs> he knew that. He, he could anticipate. That, that I have no proofs. But uh, <laughs> of, of the other thing that I say now, I have a lot of proofs yes. that he knew what was happening in the mind. Eraya? Yes, yes, yes. yes. Uh, yeah, is, as you is... said, thankfully you have already said that we are not going to speak about it. So okay. I'm, I'm safe there. <laughs> You're not talking about uh, Guruji's energy. Uh, I mean, you know, that picture I showed of the medical class going on, the therapy class, there were at least 30, 30, 35 assistants and each were possibly handling one or two patients. I wonder uh, if anybody would like to say about how he could read through the patient. Yeah, read through the patient, see what was happening. Yeah. So, Raya, you wanted to say something on this? Yeah, small incidents. It, it just happened so that uh, there were some photographers going to come uh, to take Guruji's photos. And I requested Guruji that we uh, at the institute don't really have a lot of photos while he's helping in, in the latter years. In, uh, I think, 2011 onwards, because that's when I met uh, my wife. But uh, so I requested him if I could ask Kavita to come and take a few photos while he's doing his own thing. He said, she should not come in my way. And so the class went on. She was there. She took photos. After the class, when we were coming home, my wife one more time, as in with other contexts, but said, you should be ashamed of yourself. Guruji is 90 plus and with the speed that he moves, with the speed he adjusts, with the speed he sees, with the speed he's done everything and you people are struggling like, you know, the the uh, I don't know how to call it, but like when the, when the lioness goes and the cubs are kind of trying to catch up, you are just trying to catch up and he, he's gone. You should be ashamed. So this was post 2011. Uh, I think Steph has been uh, yeah, Stephanie, waiting. Yeah, Stephanie. Just, uh, you know, uh, the medical class, it was always very interesting um, to be in the medical class before it started. It was a very quiet thing. Everyone was sort of like waiting for um, some of the patients would turn up. They'd get and their initial... Um, poses ready, but generally everything would be very quiet until Guruji entered the room. And then more or less even the bolsters stood to attention. Everyone was very aware of him working. And he would work often quite strongly, quite loudly. We would know exactly where he was in the room. And he, he would go from one person to the other doing that miracle of knowing Actually, he would, I, I noticed because if I was working on somebody, he would come to me and he didn't have a sheet of paper, but he knew precisely what their sequence was because um, that's what he gave to them last week. And so he had uh, this memory bank of what, he, what work he had done with them last week, plus the other 50 people in the room. And he wasn't writing that down. Now, the whole purpose for the, the pieces of paper in the room was so that Gita could be sure that the assistants would follow what was needed to be done. It, the Iyengars themselves didn't need those bits of paper. And yet still, Guruji would be very, very consistent in the work. And then every, every now and then, it was as though he would see a change in the student and he would change their work. As the night wore on, as he worked more and more with the students, with the patients, one of the things that started to happen was he wasn't so vociferous, he wasn't so strong or commanding with his voice. He was just actually quietly moving about and often he would hum to himself. If you're standing near him, he'd be working with somebody, adjusting them, maybe adjusting their neck, their, maybe they had perhaps an ear problem and he was working with the ears, whatever it was, and he would be working with them hands-on 
not instructing a thousand and one assistants, but hands on on that patient. And he would just start softly humming to himself. It was really a quite extraordinary thing because he's, you know, known to be so dynamic and such a strong teacher and such a strong disciplinarian. Yes, he was. And yet there was this part of him that was constantly in touch with an inner flow of something. I would come across that often also in the library when he was working, when he was quietly working away at his table, he was doing some writing. Not usually when the place was full of visitors, when there were less people around, he obviously got some deep nourishment for himself from the process. I mean, that's my reading into it. But people don't hum to themselves unless they're in a state of deep contentment, deep santosh. He was really going to that state while working. And I thought this was pretty amazing for somebody who was so extraordinary, so dynamic, had such a strong presence, strong, powerful practice. And yet there was this sweet musical hum in the background when he was working. It was quite extraordinary. True, Stephanie. In fact, I have always been amazed that Guruji has done so much. But whenever we saw him in the library, you know, when he was actually, he, he was always relaxed. You never saw Guruji stressed. You never saw Guruji, oh, I have to do this or I have done this. He was literally in the moment. Literally, we, you know, th th there wasn't any thought, I have to do this or I have done this. Is it, uh, it, it, with him, it was as if things just flowed, things happened. Now, you know, all the books, I was once asked a question by somebody, uh, which amused me, but this person had just known Guruji and said, who has written Guruji's books? And I was stunned. I said, Guruji has written Guruji's books. So no, but, so I said, he has written, corrected, recorrected, and possibly seen the T's and uh, to, uh, about it. So Stephanie, you did a lot of, uh, maybe the first I would like to go to Pachi because he, he typed the uh, Light on Yoga Sutras of Patanjali. Light on yoga and uh, light on pranayam were done. Those people are no longer with us. But Pachi, some memories of the light on yoga sutras of Patanjali when the book happened. Well, I remember that we were, uh, but maybe Jawar will remember better because I was all the time in the typing machine. Okay. And uh, <laughs> I was not bringing my eyes out of the typing machine. But uh, Jawar was there along with uh, Birju and uh, Birya and Zubin. And uh, I remember I have still one uh, picture of them uh, with uh, five of us with Guruji in the intensive, during the intensive in the platform. And we were calling ourselves uh, five Pandavas around, uh, around Guruji. <laughs> remember Jawar? So yeah. how it was during the, for you, uh, during the, that uh, Light, on Yoga, Light on Yoga Sutra? You see, that was the time when Guruji had the first uh, backbend intensive. And it was by invitation only. That means nobody could just apply for it. Guruji would select who would come. And uh, yes, so there we were, all of us. It was then Birju who told me that uh, after we finished the, the practice, you know, uh, how the... Uh, I can clearly remember how the uh, session started. First asana was Adhomukha Vrikshasana, once Adhomukha Shwanasana, the second asana, once. Third asana was Urdhva Dhanurasana. And that is how the session started. So once and that went on for about what, two and a half to three hours? Yes. As we finished, of course, you could barely get up and walk out of the hall. As we were coming down, Birju said, I saw Pachi Bai and Birya go to the library. Let us go and see what they're doing. So we came down to the library and there was Pachi Bai furiously typing away. We didn't have uh, the desktops in those days, but there was an electric, Godrej electric 
typewriter with that revolving golf ball by it was in collaboration with the IBM company of america it had i am told now that it had just 10 pages of memory and it would invariably heat up in the december winter this was december pona i think 1992 if i'm not mistaken 92 90 my 93, 93. sorry 1993 So, so of course, all work stopped. Ten pages, Bachi Bai would then have them printed out five times for the five of us. We would sit, correct it, give it back to him. So he made the grammatical uh, corrections or spelling mistakes, recorrected it, reprinted it out again five times, and all this was written by Guruji in his hand. Huh? It was handwritten paper. With red ink, with all I would say almost two or three lines spacing at that time in Guruji's handwriting, and uh, Pachi Bai would just take one page after the other. He's very fast. I think he's by types at about one hundred and twenty words per minute. Pachi Bai, yes. So, maybe, maybe. <laughs> so that's how we sat. So then we decide. Then we ask, "What are you doing?" And he said, "We are." Typing Guruji's new book, The Light on Yoga Sutras of Patanjali. Of course, we all got excited, and we all wanted to help. So that is how we started taking turns, so that the work did not stop. So Birju would go for lunch, come back. I would go for lunch, come back. Zubin would go for lunch, come back, so that the work did continue. Then, in after that, all of us had to go compulsory for. At least two hours recovery asana from four to six, and God help you if you practice back bending. Guruji said anybody does back bending during the recovery time, you are only allowed to do shirsasana and sarvangasana. That's all. He said you will go back, take your bag, pack up your bags, and leave the center. Go back home. So and then after that was the therapy class. So some of us would sometimes help with the therapy, or some of us stayed back, and the work continued till late in the night at times. And that is how we would keep on. And again, the next day morning after the session was over, we went back straight to the library, kept on reading, re-reading, re-typing, etc. And that's how gradually the book started to take shape. Stephanie, would you want to add, and uh, you know, about all the Ashtadal and the other books? How was it keeping pace with Guruji? Yeah, um, I was just thinking about that. Um, certainly, he wrote by hand everything that, um, and of course, it would get several writings and rewritings. Um, we would, um, I can remember, he would, we would. Uh, I think mostly Patchy would do the original typing in, and then later a computer turned up. I can remember I learned how to um, start on a computer when it was Microsoft, literally Word 2.0. Yes, <laughs> so this is how we did it. The But, black and white. Um, yeah. Well, so uh, you know, extra space. Um, Manuscript was given to Guruji after it was typed in for him to read, and he used to do a thing which actually Raya's mother coined the term for. She, she would hand me the papers, and I and these corrections would have to be put in, or the additions would have to be put in, and Uma would hand it to me and say, "Guruji has done coloring in," because literally. In between every line, he had written three more lines, very small, all the way up the side, all the way across the top, down the other side. These were works of art. This was his way of working. So um, it was really quite something. When the books, Asadal Yoga Mala, for instance, were getting close to completion. Sometimes um, before it was actually sent to Allied publishers, and Allied publishers would do a bit of editing. Before that, sometimes there was a time when a fellow uh, John Evans would do some of the um, 
um, final kind of editing to sort of like really shape it up a bit. Uh, John Evans has um, had a quite a strong academic background, so he was very helpful. John would turn up, and this is an extraordinary thing about Guruji, was um, we would print out pages and pages of the manuscript of one of the latest versions of Asadali Yogamala, and Guruji would ask John to have a read and to say what, how he thought it was all sounding, and um, John would pick this up, and he would literally strike out whole paragraphs and pages. John would get a pen and he would just strike it out and give it to Guruji. Now, Guruji would have spent, you know, literally years of his life accumulating and coming to that point that he was expressing and putting down on paper. And this fellow who was doing the sort of final version of editing with him would just take out whole pages and just strike it out and then hand it to Guruji so he could see it. He'd, he'd look at the places where whole paragraphs had been just struck through and Guruji did not bat an eyelid. He just accepted it. It was almost as though for him, John Evans more or less handed him a whole new treasure trove to begin with. And so Guruji would pick up the pen and more or less start in on the new now changed version. But he just did not have any qualms. He would just accept somebody deleting whole paragraphs of his work out. It was really quite extraordinary. And he would then colour in the next three pages with more lines. It would come and go a bit like this. Yeah. Yes, but Stephanie, that is all right that uh, Guruji was accepting John Evans' uh, corrections, all of them. But yes. you know as well as me that uh, after John's corrections also, again, he was coming to the test and he was completing and uh, changing uh, some sentences yes. and again complete to make more sense. So it was uh, just to for, for people to have in one idea of uh, how the things were uh, done. Uh, text was there, it was the original, the original articles of Guruji, and then that uh, taped and put in front of him, he was correcting, adding, well, I remember many articles were together, most, almost uh, copy one of them in the beginning, published in different place. I remember once in uh, Biria's house in Paris, with, I, I went from Madrid with full of articles and we were selecting and putting together, which is the same copy of this, but this paragraph is not here. This is not mm. here. All were Guruji's articles, but mm. as they are being published in different places, we were taking and selecting this article from here with this paragraph of this article, which were his corrections to be published in that particular uh, magazine. Yes. So yes. after after that, uh, it was put in front of Guruji. He was doing a lot of corrections. Then those corrections we were entering as well we as you when, uh, when uh, uh, during the entire year. And uh, then it was sent to John Evans. John Evans was correcting for English and sometimes he was telling this is uh, difficult to understand on this yeah, should be a little bit. John would just, yeah, he would, Point out the repetition. Yeah, and, and repetitions also. With, yeah. uh, and then and then he was again coming back. I remember once he, it was the last uh, copy. I don't know which volume was, uh, five, six, or maybe, I don't know, maybe, yeah, five or six, I, I think. And it was the last, last version. I finished entering the corrections. I print it. And I told you, uh, Stephanie, I will put that in uh, Guruji's desk. And you told me, no, don't do it. <laughs> don't do it because if he sees a page in white, be, uh, printed, freshly printed, he will again uh, put uh, some red corrections on it just to improve and give the last touch of uh, his uh, before going to the printing house. I remember very well how you told me, no, 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 don't put it. You will do that at the end, but don't give him now because again, he will, he will yes. add some corrections. It was impossible for him and that were your words, to have one uh, freshly printed page in front of him without putting some red ink on it between the lines. So that was beautiful to see how he wanted to improve the text every yeah. time, all the time, 
And yes. then uh, it was a good time because we had the computer. So we, we need not to do as uh, Jawar was telling from uh, for Light on Yoga Sutras, each time to be printed again, again, as the machine was not having memory. Yeah. And then that, that I wanted to underline this. He was watching each sentence of each page just and when he sent it to the printer to the finishing it was because it was absolutely corresponding to his uh, uh, oh, thinking yes. of the yes. moment no doubt so but when, uh, whenever anyone was going to help him with the editing for guruji it just meant a new starting point he would just launch off from that that place and it would seem to give him even more inspiration than before. Yeah, he really built, he built these, it was almost like he completely constructed a whole city out of his work. I remember Guruji spending a lot, lot of time to explain to us, for example, if the test was coming and uh, for, for example, Vidya was reading and seeking this, 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 putting question here, question mark here, this, and that. And then Guruji trying to explain, trying no, explaining to us why he should change this so he was and uh, stephanie those moments were unique for us no mm -hmm. do you agree yes. With yes unique moments when yes. uh, he was explaining how uh, raya so every, everybody who was there involved in the oruma and everyone it was unique these moments where he was explaining to us just to check if we were understanding not to check if uh, if uh, he was right but to check if the way he was explaining was enough for enough for the public to understand. That was great. Yeah. I think it was very important for Guruji that what he wanted to communicate was being communicated. And I think all the people around were the sounding board. So if they did not understand, he modified it. And while you were talking of this, you know, while you were talking of his extraordinary work of the Ashtadal Yoga Mala, which was, you know, uh, the very, very uh, deeper aspects of yoga, if I may say so, at uh, that point of time, there was work on yoga for sports. And we always had our joke with Pachi Bhai, where he would say that, uh, you know, it was the BCCI board for cricket, for cricket control in India who had asked for some kind of a manual on uh, sports for cricketers. And that's where I was asked to help out. And uh, that, 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 when that work was going on and Ashtadhan, he gave that same importance to this book also. So we would always joke, you know, they're doing high spiritual work whilst I was doing the mundane work, as they would say it. And absolutely mundane. mundane. Absolutely mundane. But he was so very particular even at that, especially when it came to the techniques. Like I remember how many times, Mr. what have you learned? You can't write simple tadasan. And you could see, you know, uh, although you were possibly recollecting all the instructions, the guidance he had given, and possibly the most difficult time was the photo shoot. We've had three to four photo shoots of 400 plus photographs, which were finally selected. And, uh, you know, the smallest things how we would notice, like the photographer would take a picture, there would be five, six models, would do the poses. He would select out these two. The photographer would take the picture and digital cameras, high-end photographers, quickly click. And he would show it to him and, and somebody is, you know, little one millimeter movement and he would catch it. And that's the time we realized how he must have done light on yoga photographs. We are talking of 2005, 2006, digital cameras, perfect lighting, so many people doing it. And Guruji solo, literally solo, knew what angles to take, uh, you know, what the right lighting should be so there would be no shadows. There was no cleaning up of the pictures. And I think it was an, it was a unique experience with half a dozen models, if I would say so. Uh, Raya, you remember uh, the photo shoots or Jawahar, you were there for that photo shoot where we would keep pressing your toes down, which would have moved up. <laughs> all the time, all the time. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, while we are talking about uh, Guruji's precision, the precision was not only in his practice, in his teaching, people often tended to look at it very, very seriously, which we should. And uh, they would notice in the therapy class that, you know, this patient has been adjusted with one blanket folded the way Raya said, and another blanket. And the next day repeated the same thing very meticulously. They had imprinted that whole image of the proper arrangement in their mind. 
and next day guruji would say what have you done don't you know so would anybody want to comment on that you know raya you have you know you are prepared and then why were you wrong one of no one of the questions uh, he more than don't you know he would ask can't you see and that was one of the uh, intriguing questions that he would ask like can't you see and we couldn't but the thing is as you were saying like we would have calculated like uh, one blanket half folded blank one blanket simple fold you put the simple fold regular fold underneath and then half folded on top and the neck is arranged and but that days that moments what has happened to that individual can't you see and that i think that that question i it still persists like uh, can't you see and that that kind of a lag that we have between that moment in that moment what is it and what we are seeing from yesterday so the the kind of stuck image that we have in our head and w- what is happening in that moment can't we see and that's probably one of those practicing aspects that we need to work with work on so guru ji is uh, guru ji has always been dynamic that was the dynamism we were stuck of what we had learned or what we thought we had learned and uh, the, you know he, he, it was so those who got got stuck in a sequence a structure could never handle guru ji they were lost so even when it came to teaching he would see the students and teach and and the energy so for example at the age of 92 when he went to china 1600 people the chinese had organized for him to sit they had put a big chair and they had this very fancy platform which was like a flower shape and all of us were worried that you know when guruji is teaching he's not going to sit on the chair and teach he would be moving looking at turning all around to see all those 1600 people and we were worried that you know on those curves uh, so uh, you know all those kind of things we would miss out but uh, you know he was actually communicating to the students through the not through the translator just through his voice you know so that was the dynamic power of guruji and he was so very innovative so pandu you know anger yoga is props can you narrate something of how the belts came in or you know all these props without which we cannot live today which are sold all over the world uh m- mute you are on mute yeah actually if you ask me about the bells bells came somewhere in 1983 approximately uh there was a group from france they brought some mats and then the, those mats are tied up with these belts and these couple of belts maybe about 40 50 60 belts are lying in the store room and once guru ji entered in the store room and suddenly he took one belt out and he came and he started looking the belt he started putting the you know sometimes in the hand you know then he put that belt into back side of his both the shoulders and he did the sarvangasana after he said oh my god it is nice you know because it is adjustable so you can use the sarvangasana then he told me to come and go and bring one more belt put it to my ankle then he said okay come on bring one more belt put it my thigh like that he made lot of invention on that belt so like that belt came in the picture for practicing then you can use it for a belt you can use it for back belt for everything if you don't reach anywhere in the pole use the belt that was the story of the belt actually <laughs> and mm. in the early is i think in the 70s photographs we had barely any props the tressler's half a lesson mm-hmm. and oh, no. gradually tressler come very late so what happened guruji went to one government office uh, and he was sitting outside waiting for that person he was in the lobby so what there was even balcony so he told me he was standing there to spend some time so he did one trikonasan then he did some standing poses so with this uh, balcony 
he thought my god this is a very useful he started twisting with the upavishta kona paryurt trikona sana and all those poses with this idea he made the tressler in the institute so he can use the patients that was the idea so we do know that guruji has been an innovator there is no doubt but he had the generosity and he never ever claimed or proclaimed or patented any of these things and today if people across the world can get some benefit from its practice uh, no doubt it is guruji's contribution uh, you know guruji traveled and uh, obviously traveling was not very easy all the times it's long journeys long flights long hauls and uh, how how did he travel uh you know or even when he went in this 90s raya if you would like to say did guruji only travel business class did he demand business I, class i i actually uh somehow uh, i was told to book his tickets uh so i i used to book his tickets and i mean the the person he was he would write down bks ayanga mail h uh vanita sridhar female age he would give me a list handwritten and uh, tell me to book he so i would give him whatever the options were and he would tell me okay book on this flight so i booked it couple of times and i i don't exactly remember but i think prashant ji uh, told me that on, now on uh, book guruji's ticket in the first row not in the back so and it's not even business class actually on the regular airlines the domestic airlines and typically he would go to bangalore to go to bellur or so i think this is around 2007 2008 so uh, so it would be just the first row where there is a little more like room and stuff like that so i book that and uh, guruji would immediately give the money whatever that money was and guruji said why is my ticket uh, don't remember exactly the figure but it was some 16 16000 rupees and at the back the other people it was something around 6 7000 rupees so i said uh, no i you know you should travel and prashant ji has told so so he went by that he had gone to bellur for some function it was uh, so whenever he went there would be some kind of a uh, function the almost uh, it's a gav jevan the entire village would come to eat uh and he came back and uh, just before the practice or one of those uh, uh, times he, we were uh, he was telling me how actually the function happened how many people were there the hospital is coming into uh, i think hospital was getting built so it's coming into uh, you know shape and he said he just went quiet for a moment and he said you know you book this 16000 18000 whatever that amount was that extra money you spend on me i feel so sad that if you wouldn't have spent that we could have still given few more people to uh feed we could have f- fed for few more people so i was thinking this man i mean he's he's at the age and at a position where you know that that shouldn't matter but he had such a fantastic feeling towards everyone that he he didn't he didn't really appreciate being pampered himself spending that money on himself wasn't a, wasn't a you know cool uh, thing to do <laughs> Raya when you were talking about Belur you know especially in the early days of uh, Belur when the Ramamani Nagar was coming up i happened to be in Bangalore so i used to visit very very often and there like you said there would be food for the entire village and uh, very often you know the the children the villagers were so poor so poor so they would come again and again although a lot of food they would take it back and come back again and and that point of time the so the feeding would go on say 3:30 4 o'clock in the afternoon and guruji was always the last one to eat he wouldn't yeah. eat before because he would say uh, they are all my guests and they should be eating first so you know and he was not young he was 88 89 at that time 
but he always fed the others he always for him every he saw the divinity in each soul uh there has also been a question you know like guruji would travel across the world and did he have any specifications of where he would like to stay uh where did he stay was he you know wanting his specific kind of a hotel room or something i had Pachi... something about what uh, raya was telling about the tickets once yeah. uh, once we were going in a car that time uh, chavi chavi alongina was driving from uh, his place alicante to barcelona and in the middle it was a long long journey and in the middle of the journey about 2 uh, o'clock in the afternoon 3 o'clock maybe we stopped in a beautiful city in the middle it was peniscola and uh, we were having some food and this and then uh, we were speaking with biria biria we were speaking about what to do because guruji will reach tie to barcelona we were going to jordi's place but we have to stop before in reus for another center to be inaugurated by guruji it was a long day and long journey so we decided that we were we are going to take one uh, one room for guruji to rest in uh, peniscola after having that uh, uh, break for lunch and uh, having something so i i go nearby and i take a your hotel room for guruji to rest for one hour one and a half hour like this and uh, i coughed after uh, taking the room i go to the bar where we were and say guruji there is one room already already taken and paid for because if not he he, he will say no so pay, the room is paid and we have to go there because they are waiting for you and uh, just uh, to relax on the room on the top of the of the bed if you want or whatever you want and we were going to the room and he told me how much you paid now guruji this is not a big price uh, is not a big hotel it was a very very normal hotel eh? not a top of hotel is a very normal hotel is just there just to relax one how much you pay now guruji it was uh, how much you pay i ask i'm asking you i have to tell i said the price and he told me he was not happy he little bit shouted at me telling you should not do that you should not spend that money just for me to rest a little time here Okay now it is done I will go because uh, they, uh, no he asked me they will give you the money back I say I, I didn't know but I say no guruji it is uh, it is uh, over they, that money is uh, they will never give back so okay I will go but you should not do that so he didn't want to the money to be spent for his convenience and for his rest or for his comfort as uh, just now raya was telling Yes, and also when he stayed, you know, he stayed in people with people uh, with students. Was there any specific requirement ever? Oh no, 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 no! You know, our house is not uh, big now in Madrid. But let me tell you one more thing before that. When I was in, uh, when we were living, my wife and me were living in Paris. And once uh, Guruji gave me something to keep with me of him because he was going to travel. I said, "Keep it this, uh, keep this," because. actually he was some thing for uh, for Biria's marriage he was not yet married okay he was some thing that he wanted he didn't want to give to Biria he gave me keep this for you and then i will ask you so i kept home and then when uh, uh, when he came he told me you do this and i will tell you what to do with this money okay when he came back when the on the journey he told me okay uh, we everything is settled okay you give me give me the money back i say okay that uh, is in my house okay we go we were walking walking in the on the metro both of us like this in the metro in paris we okay we go to your house okay but guruji it is very small it is not uh, a big house okay we go to your house okay we take the metro and we go both of us to the house miren was there and before entering i said guruji this is really a small house sorry for the for the quality of the place you are uh, i am bringing you okay open 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 the door i open we enter it was a very small very small place and uh, he looks at me and he says don't be ashamed this is the real life this is how i i was living long 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 time with all my children in a very place little bit bigger than this but we were a lot of people there and this is the place this is the way that we are we were living i was living don't be ashamed because you are living in a so small place okay then we came to madrid and this uh, place where i am here 
is a little bit bigger, but still it's not uh, 80 square meters. Huh? And uh, when uh, he came, he came with uh, but all the people who came with him and we were uh, traveling together. And uh, to stay here, I say, okay, Guruji, sorry, it is a small house, it's bigger than Paris, but it's still a small house. No, this is a palace, he was telling. Just a, a very, I'm telling you, it's no, it's 75, 80 square meters. This is a palace, he told me. And then every time when we were coming from uh, Madrid or from the classes or from the lecture, okay, now we go to Pachi's palace, he was telling. So really anything was enough for him. We were considering it was not enough. We were trying to find the best for him. We were trying to take the best tickets for him, but for him, anything was more than enough. And he was really not asking for anything. And he was very, very, very easy to, to be with him and to receive him in our houses. Very, very, very simple. For example, if one day he was seeing that it was difficult for us to go for shopping and prepare food for dinner because we are we were a little bit uh, uh, short of time, he will very immediately say, okay, we go out for dinner. Though we knew that he didn't want to go out for dinner, he preferred to the food to be prepared home, but himself was telling, okay, don't, don't, don't worry, don't worry, we'll go out for dinner. But I saw it everywhere in Madrid, in Paris, everywhere, everywhere. Okay, we go out for dinner, we don't take this uh, charge on you. He was very, very, very simple, caring of, uh, of the well-being of the people who were receiving him, who were al uh, along with him, caring for everything. Okay, let me tell you just one more. I'm taking too much time? No, you can go, you okay. can give your story. So once we were in, uh, in Barcelona, one uh, ashram in the mountains, uh, they invited Guruji for uh, classes. And uh, from uh, Paris, Corinne, Viria and myself came as uh, the driver with the car to be the drivers of uh, Guruji. We took him at the airport and then this was his car. I was the driver. And one day there was no class, only class in the morning. And then in the afternoon, he was free. And okay, uh, he, was, okay he was asking, oh, what is the program now? And I said, Guruji, there is really a beautiful mountain here nearby. The name is uh, Monseigne, Monseigne, uh, close, no, not far from Barcelona. And a beautiful place, forest, beautiful trees, beautiful views, and great mountain. Okay, let's go, let's go. I, I, I want to see that. I want to be that mountain. Okay, we go, we take, it was uh, more, I don't know, two hours driving more or less. And we reach there, we start climbing up the mountain on the road and the fog, but not a regular fog, a real, a real fog. We didn't see anything, not one tree, just we were seeing the road and the signal, traffic signals, not one tree, not one mountain, not one valley, nothing, 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 nothing. Just we reached to one place we watched in the middle was a restaurant. We had one uh, hot chocolate there, nothing to see. Okay, we say, okay, we go down and we, it was also a little bit late and we, okay, we go, we go back and then we will see the, we will see if we can see anything there. We go down and again the same, no, no one single tree was visible there, nothing. We reached the valley, everything was open and then coming back to the ashram for dinner and in the evening and uh, I was, Really, I was feeling really embarrassed. Embarrassed because uh, I say, okay, Guruji, this is a wonderful place. And we didn't see not a single tree. And uh, I was really feeling embarrassed driving silently. He looks at me and said, you did a very beautiful choice for sightseeing. And I said, but Guruji, we didn't see anything, not a single tree, but the choice was very good. The place was very good. Okay, fog was there, but the place was very beautiful. I don't know if you believe me, but from that moment, I was again happy and again, again joyful because he was reacting like that. And yes. I understood that he was feeling and he was very much caring about what we people around were feeling inside all yes. the time, taking care of people around. That That's was very, very, very clear. 
that's that's so very true in fact when you are talking about guruji's visit to your house it brings back memories and that way back in the 80s when um, my sister neeta and birju were shooting uh, and jawahar feroza they were shooting for doordarshan and for a morning show and then they decided that they wanted to discuss about you know the next shows and where to go so go said oh your house is closest so they came home and so uh, i think neeta or birju phoned home and said guruji is going to be coming home and you know we'll have dinner also now uh, we stayed on the third floor it was a very small house and at that point of time what was also was we were having our uh, religious uh, pajoshan where in we would not have any uh, you know roots stems even vegetables so my mother was definitely very very worried i mean guruji is coming for the first time and we have no vegetables so what do you what do you feed him and of course you know we were practicing that so it wouldn't be appropriate to you know break it down or whatever so whatever was made of course a lot of dishes were made but the mom and my father was also very concerned you know i mean guruji coming home uh, but when the moment guruji walked in he was so much at home you didn't feel like there was a, you know a revered very important guest he just made you feel at home in your own home he never uh, never ever you know whenever he came so it was this this amazing amount of simplicity where he could connect to each of us uh, time is flowing by and i'm sure as we start recollecting memories we can go on and on however uh, there is uh, something that a question has come from the audience and uh, they they said that you know guruji was a disciplinarian perfectionist and wanted everyone to excel and you all turned out to be the greatest group of teachers for us from this is what she says watching the videos but while taking lessons from him did you ever feel low or like it is impossible how did you revive yourself or it never occurred so maybe an end note if somebody would like to say or maybe raya yes you can end you get the can privilege I? of being the youngest in the group yes yeah uh, so so uh, you know one of the fascinating things about guruji is he never hierarchically uh, position that this is the higher use of yoga and this is a lower use of yoga or you know that kind of a thing for him to and he spoke often about the definition of dharma that anyone who's falling you need to uplift that person so when i started practicing there was i was in a rather bad uh, life situation for myself on a very individual level as a teenager had difficult time etc and then i started practicing now it's my own practice etc etc but within practice also there were days and months and where you would just feel completely like frustrated and dejected that the fact that you know it can be as as a 20 year old you are not able to do kapotasana so it was one of those days and uh, guruji was lying down in shavasan he had weights on them and i was like sitting like that you know i was just trying to reflect about the practice or just not even reflect it's a bigger word just just feeling dejected and depressed and i'm not able to get this also and he just opened his eyes he looked at me so i got up we i think dr naik was there we removed the weights or whatever he came out of shavasan and as he started walking i just happened to like all of us used to walk down together so um, he came down and uh, he just asked me uh, what happened so i was just like nodding my head saying no 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 kind of a thing and i just said it's impossible so uh, he said what is impossible i said this the idea of practice you know like i was trying to do kapotasana or whatever and it's impossible and he just laughed he just <laughs> i was like what kind of a reaction is that you know i'm 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 like pulling my hair out the, no, not literally but he's like why are you laughing at me so i felt even more like like sad and like depressed or whatever went home had lunch whatever 2:30 in the library and uh, those of you who were there you know when guruji would walk down from the library stairs and there was that railing in the later years or 
so you could hear his rings on that on that metal so uh, when i heard that uh, i think i went up because he would carry his uh, magazines and his letters etc etc so i just he he had a gatta in his hand and he was walking down so i took the whole bunch came kept it on the on the on his table and when he came down whosoever is there he he uh, we touched his feet and we went back to whatever we were reading writing whatever that was he sat down settled there for a moment and he called me he called me and pulled out a copy of art of yoga and he gave it to me he said open it when i opened it it had he he had written there dear raya yoga is a difficult art to master but not impossible with love pk sayangar whatever little time that i saw him little more whatever that time was i i i request all to put your name in this it just was accidental incidental that it was a dear raya but for him i think it was he's written it to everyone dear rajvi dear jawahar dear pachi dear pandu dear steph me dear everyone whosoever is listening whosoever wants to learn in from from what he start write that in your name and at the end he says with love bk sangar thank you that raya was- thank you raya for narrating that anecdote and uh, honestly speaking guru ji never did yoga he lived yoga he was in yoga and of you know the millions of us who attempt to do yoga who try to do yoga we try to practice yoga there is only one who's a yogi and that was our guru ji we learned we we were definitely extremely fortunate i would say all of us were very very fortunate to have been there i would say it must have been a karma the blessings of our parents especially i can say that for jawar my family and raya because our parents got us into yoga and pandu of course uh, got us with guruji and just the grace that we could spend so much time with him in the class outside the class and i wouldn't even say it's learnings he he motivated he inspired he actually went within us he made us do things which possibly we wouldn't even even dreamt of doing i mean i'm not talking of poses or asanas but the kind of courage and uh, the confidence that he gave the determination that he gave he totally brought about a transformation in us uh, you know and we can go on talking i'm sure and there are many others who would have so but we have to also respect time so on his 103rd birthday as i say we remember guruji it's not that we remember him today we remember him every day i think all of us when we start practice when we start teaching we are at his feet so thank you friends my fellow practitioners my guru bhai guru ben for joining me in this program i hope for the newer generation younger generation who i would say have not had the chance to be with guru ji to be in his presence we have been able to share uh, or for them to feel what it was to be there in his presence so thank you very much and thank you once again and on behalf of rimi i thank you all for joining in some of the questions we could not take uh, because some were not relevant to the topic but we will try to attempt to answer them also because they were more of your personal practice so thank you so much bye bye everybody thank you thank you bye so so i would like to end again so so we end the program paying our respects to guruji
Thank you all for joining in. Thank you, Raji.